Thank you for inviting me to present at your conference. My name is Paul Lang. I'm the founder of International Training Development Group. Today I'll be talking about the history of e-learning. The word e-learning was coined back in 1998. In 2011, 77% of American corporations were using online learning. In 1995, this was only 4%. So as you can see, it's had a phenomenal growth. And that growth pattern is going to continue into the future. Um, in 2014, the estimate number of students will increase by threefold, and by 2019, they believe that over half the students doing classes will be online. And therefore, based on this, you really need to position all your education services to actually support that sort of growth. And there's really three high level types of e-learning. One would be um, unsupported, uh, the other one would be supported, and the third would be just in time or mobile learning. And each one of them have their place in e-learning, and we're just gonna discuss uh, the, the pros and cons of each and how they may fit in. First off is um, unsupported. Unsupported, you've probably seen them before, which is like a lot of inductions. You, you start, you work your way through, unassisted, and you end. The, um, they have a lot of uh, inductions work perfectly, but where the downside is, if a corporation gets a whole suite of unsupported products, like uh, you've seen a lot of them come out, which is like uh, Microsoft. They, they, they went through Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, Team Leadership. They may have had a thousand courses. They basically put this into the corporation and said, we've got unlimited access. Everyone can jump on board and do these courses, which in principle sounds great. And a lot of people do take it up, but where the downside is, being unsupported, it's low take up rate, and there are really no testing mechanisms. So there's no transfer of skills. So you have to watch out where and how you're using them and the testing mechanisms put in place. The second one is supported. Now supported is mainly used for your accredited universities, and that would be where you've got a lot of um, lecturers or trainer in basically talking the students through. That would be uh, with blogs, using webinars, um, using a lot of you know, social media technology. That will give you a, um, a measurable test and it will also give you a high uptake. And most of our courses, we're in that, that supported mode um, in the International Train Development Group. And the third would be just in time. Now this is probably where most of the training is trending to, which is mobile learning. Now mobile learning, um, some of the adoptions is in a, in a hospital environment. And the hospital environment would be, you may have been trained on a certain piece of equipment by a, a manufacturer. But if there's a, a second bit of equipment, which is made by a different manufacturer, you may not know all the features. So you would come along with your smart device, scan it on a barcode, and it would come up with an induction on how to use that system. And that's where we're, we're tending to go. It could be uh, in the um, construction industry. There's a certain vehicle that you know how to drive, but there's another model. You would scan it on your smart device, it would come up and give you a quick induction. And what should happen is, it should have a test at the end and it's synchronized back. So that not only have you done the course, you actually have been deemed competent. Which means as a company, you now have some coverage to know that, that person is competent when they're using that machine. So with the technology for e-learning now, the learning management system, but also how you develop into a learning management system. Uh, used to be using a lot of Flash, HTML. Now we're talking WebGL or um, HTML5. And the reason this type of development of e-learning is coming in is due to mobile learning. So again, your learning management system and the way you develop 
has, has to synchronize for that mobile platform now. Uh, and they have to basically resize for different platforms. What works on an iPad may not work on a Samsung. So the, the, the technology side of e-learning has become quite difficult and a very specialized field. And that's what our team spent a lot of time actually getting that, that mesh right. One of the difficult um, concerns with corporate clients or meeting uh, students' needs is how to contextualize a course to meet a large client base. So, at uh, the ITAD group, we've developed for individual students, corporate clients, universities and colleges. And everyone wants to create a, a customised solution for a particular student. So the question is, how do you actually create one course that can contextualise across everyone? And that's taken us a long time to develop that type of e-learning. And how we've established that is using a simulated work environment, workplace based, work environment um, and virtual classrooms. Now the simulated work environment is a complete online company per se. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that someone was doing a, a qualification in human resources. They could go to our simulated work environment where there is a complete HR department. Operating HR department, all the org charts, all the policies, procedures are in there and they could base their assessment on a HR department or they could actually contextualize it for their workplace and do the assessment in their workplace, or they could do a combination of both. Their organization may not have certain policies or certain documentations. They would go to the simulated work environment, use those policy documents or templates, implement them in their workplace and be assessed on it. So that's how it's contextualized for any student using the combination of those environments plus the actual virtual classroom. The virtual classroom brings trainers or lecturers across. Now, when I say across, that means they're talking in real time to the students, the students are asking real related questions, and the actual trainer or the lecturer can actually now contextualize it in a face-to-face, -face, online face-to-face -face environment. You know, some of the key benefits in, in doing online education is there is real no um, geographic restrictions, no geographic boundaries, and the flexibility that goes with it. So a student that's doing a course in, uh, in Africa can do the same course in Australia, in any location, as long as you have the infrastructure to support it. And, and that's the great beauty of it. Using the, uh, the virtual classrooms, they can also communicate, they can do action learning strategies, and you can bring them all into place. So, the world is actually getting a small, becoming a smaller place. It's becoming very small and e-learning is contributing to that. Uh, in most schools now, this is in Australia, they have a lot of what's called iPad programs. And there's entire sessions and lessons are based on the iPad, the apps and the learning happening in the iPad. That's where we're moving towards um, globally and you'll see that spread across the world. Thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to my presentation. If you want any additional information about how to develop e-learning or some of the technology that's required, um, feel free to contact uh, any of the staff at the International Train Development Group. We're more than happy to give you a, a little bit of support and advice because we are, um, we are in a lot of forums, we are in a lot of committees on assisting the industry in developing e-learning worldwide. Thank you.